What's up, people? So today I want to talk about uh, just a wonderful, refreshing, emboldening, enlightening, and I mean that in the like pure sense, not the hyperbolic. Oh, I know fucking everything, and you don't sense of the word. I mean, just something that had well illuminated me and just made me feel um, like I was in an elevated state. Um, and of course, of course, usual suspect DMT, but I want to give you a few preliminaries <coughs> before I get into this. So, um, number one, it was a fucking extremely stressful week for me. I mean, you can see in the last few um, that it seemed pretty calm, it seemed pretty chill, but there's always something nagging at the back of my mind. Um, and it was, a, it was a busy week, it was eventful to say the least, um, but uh, I just had no energy to party by the time Saturday night rolled around, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna party fucking my way. And I just, I felt so much tension on me, so so much rigor just just for days on end and I was, I was just ready to ready to fold and um I just went to the DMT and I was like you know what please just 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 assure me that um what I'm doing is is worth is worth it and let, let me be in a place where I can appreciate not just my situation but myself and boy did it fucking deliver but before i get into that number two my boys had a very very uh unique kinship with um native folks because i grew up with a lot of them um they as well as um white people oddly enough in my neighborhood happened to be like the um, minority because there was a very very uh, dense population of typically uh, Vietnamese and Chinese families. <coughs> and um, some, re- I mean, I, I had friends on both sides, of course, but uh, for some reason, you know, there was kind of a gang-like mentality between these divides, and so kind of by proxy, the native kids and the white kids just hung together, but I mean, they always lived by me anyways, so I spent most of my time with them. Uh, once I got to elementary and then high school, and especially in high school. Um, but uh, yeah, I know like we had like full on like brutal fist fights and like using weapons and stuff like that. Like in elementary school, no less. I mean, I remember we got bloodied. We, I remember someone threw a bottle at the back of my friend's head and it just went dunk. And uh, I got thrown down a flight of stairs, um, and, and when I was in grade five, and fractured my pinky, and because I didn't treat it properly, um, it broke my wrist. But um, I mean, I mean, I, I digress. But the people I bonded with most were the native kids. I just happened to get along with them. So I've, but I'm the thing is, you know, I'm obviously. 100% white, I'm about as white as fucking guys. Ooh, this is a cool playground here. Check that out. What a neat playground. Fuck, I wish I was four feet tall now. What a cool fucking... Oh, jeez, I wish I was four feet tall and on acid. Uh, I would have such a blast. Uh, never too old for playgrounds, but... I find I'll probably weird the kids out if I start fucking going bananas in it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, so there's that. And then the last element that I want to use before I, um, I flow into the experience is uh, just that uh, there's thematically for my DMT trips a lot of like native american typically like like local like like squamish hide and ride type of 
on imagery and uh, symbolism and just, I, I, I feel silly saying vibe, but um, almost rhythm, rhythm to it. Um, you know, like, uh, I, I, I've been to, like, many, many drum circles and stuff like that. Like, I've been there on mushrooms and just close my eyes and meditate. And, like, I, I believe I mentioned once the, the trippy experience, uh, the trippiest experience I had while sober, where these native dudes were, like, saying I was, like, a starseed alien and they wanted to perform, like, a song with their ancestors for me. And it was, like, they did it at night on the rocks of this beach that was huge and you could see like so much of the ocean and it was just like one of those profound like moving like internal and external at the same time experiences I've had and um I would liken the DMT ones to that where things would be kind of moving in rhythm with like you know uh, that, that drumming style um but uh yeah so with that being said um, I'll, get, I'll get right into it. So, um, essentially, I was so stressed out when I got home, like I said, I just was like, please, please, please show me, show me that there's something, something worth fucking all this, and, uh, I'm more so just... Fuck me, I just bought that lighter. Just, yeah, to give me, like, an insistence that everything's all fine and we can just unwind and since I was too tired to party, I was like, let's, let's party my way. The DMT entities can be my party, guys. And so, I found some Viking side trans fucking blasted that shit um and I did enough to uh, where I was just like so break through like right about to break through like there are like fucking spirits coming out of the walls and dancing to the music and close that visuals were super intense things are folding unfolding uh there's this web effect um just in the symmetry like it would be like webs kind of shooting out and and then forming into different things and uh, in sync with the music, but and, uh, I, and I was tempted to do more to uh, fully break through, but I was like, no, you know, this is kind of just what I need right now. And uh, I think that was a good idea, but then I got this inclination, call it a calling, if you will, to basically ET phone home. <laughs> So, on we go. <clears throat> Take a big blast because I... I mean, if you look at all the, like, six fucking wall pipes I use, they have, like, big crystals of DMT on them. And each one's probably about, like, 30, 30 milligrams. Um, so, if I can fire, one, fire up one of those, and um, I'm, like, kind of in that, you know, typical yogi meditation um, position and I get that big fucking hit and I go woo that's fucking fly and uh yeah typical opening up of hyperspace for me I don't get that chrysanthemum or whatever the fuck Terrence McKenna talks about other people describe I don't really get that the tunnel uh maybe it's just because I have a blindfold on but um it was just like space opened up and it was uh, hyperspace because uh, you could tell, um, for me anyways, the, oh, look at this little birdie. Oh my God, what the fuck happened to it? Jesus Christ, this fucking condemned style fucking drugged out zombies around here. Or, oh, condemned style. Uh, bird flu that's rotting junkies' brains and making them act all fucking crazy. I don't know if you've played that game, Condemned, but that's kind of something that happens <laughs> anyways in case you have no idea what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, ick, ick, very much ick. 
um Ah, bear with me. <laughs> Fucking windy. Yeah, so anyways, I got the ET phone home type thing. Like, blam, 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 boom. And yeah, as I was saying, hyperspace. Um, uh, earmarking for me of if I'm in hyperspace is if everything's going in kind of a glitchy fashion. Um, and, uh, I mean, I've got kind of different definitions, I guess, of hyperspace now. Like, like I think true, true hyperspace is, um, where you go to an area and there's like, it's like a vacuum and there's an entity doing a crazy shit in the middle. But, um, it's also just kind of like a space that opens up and the way it moves looks kind of like it's glitching out a little bit. And um, sometimes then you can go into sort of, sort of like cityscapes and stuff like that. I know another thing to keep in mind here is that um, the color scheme that I encountered, this uh, dark red and uh, black, which you think would be a menacing combination, but I found rather beautiful. It was ever present throughout this. And um, so anyways, it was like, uh, like what, introduced me into it, the first images were, um, like, feathers kind of moving like that, like something opening up. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, uh, in a movie or something that depicts, uh, like, a Vegas showgirls act, they'll have the feathers and the, the peacock feathers or whatever, and they all open them simultaneously. It's kind of like that. Um, and then, of course, I go into DMT space and um, uh, I've had this, uh, very effect happen on, um, doses that were, uh, not as profound, but because this was, like, a full breakthrough, um, it was a lot more profound, but it was, like, a bunch of entities that kind of looked like, I don't know, like, Aztec-style Native Americans were, like, uh, or, I mean, that, that, that form of that type of Native American, I guess they were all coming up to me and like offering me stuff and showing me stuff. And I kept going, because I have a silly attitude when I do these things, I kept going, show me a trick, show me a trick. And then they would go, oh, okay. And then boom, 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 transformation, something really cool would happen. And I'd be like, oh, is that all you got up your sleeve? And they'd be like, ooh. Boom, 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 boom. And I remember, like, something I've noticed, um, having done a lot of DMT over the last little while is, um, it seems like there are, uh, like, more than one, uh, space, more than one realm. Um, I find myself, like, let's say if I'm coming out of the Tryptamine Palace, that big Fabergé egg-looking thing with the city inside it, um, for those of you who know what the fuck I'm talking about, um, it's kind of hard not to without, uh, like, a lot of exploration, but, uh, yeah, like, I'll see kind of a boundary over it, and then near the boundary are, like, various versions that look very similar, um, so it seems like you almost enter into a different space each time, and this space felt different than any I had entered before, and after kind of um, cavorting with these um, little uh, uh, cultured uh, entities, um, I, uh, I remember kind of floating to the edge of their space and seeing a white boundary. And I floated out into that boundary a little bit. And I just, there's this white light and it just filled me with this warmth. And um, it's weird that the only thing I can compare it to, because I've never felt the illumination of God or what have you, but like, the closest thing I can compare it to is when I did heroin for the first time, or the, the first few times, 
and um, I felt this warm caramel like feeling all through my body some people describe it as being in the hands of God I don't know what being in the hands of God fucking feels like so I can't attest to any of that thank you very fucking much um uh yeah so uh I I remember and I got this you know sort of telepathic injection of information um uh, just as I say you have interactions that are comprehensive but they're not like in English or anything I've had some that have been close to that but not quite it's more like you just get a beam of information and you know you know you know what they're saying to you um and I I felt I didn't see but I felt the presence of what was like a woman and someone who was very skilled in artisanship very uh, adept in crafts and she was very honored for that and she goes here I want to give you a present um, and I don't know what quite it was but like it it felt either like the most like painless piercing ever um, like like someone had taken like fishing line and kind of like that just dragged it through my ear with the holes already there because it didn't hurt or someone like braiding my hair very gently something like that and um because as i said you know in dmt breakthrough experiences you feel stuff but this was like if anything a pleasant sensation and it brought with it a sense of dignity and a sense of reverence of we enjoy you we love you we want to acknowledge you and then i got another kind of transmission if you will of information going okay there are other entities that um we have not uh encountered in a long time and last time we encountered them uh they uh do not have good things to say about us and do to us and all that so I, or not do to us i mean they just they just had, had a disagreement and kind of fucked off in their own direction their own respective directions it didn't sound like there's any like direct hostility um and they're like we want you to be the ambassador and i was like i will fucking be your ambassador you fucking got it just i don't know, apologize if i swear because i am like having the time of my life here and I wish I really was, like, it was, it was oh man, it was beyond, a, like, a glorious feeling. Like, I feel bad comparing it to heroin because it's just so much more genuine and so much, like, heroin is just, like, it's a comforting feeling, but it's not at all reassuring and it's not at all tangible and, you know, something that communicates with you other than just... You know, you know, as opposed to shutting you down. Um, this did the opposite. This turned, <laughs> turned me on. It uplifted me, um, and it motivated, and um, it spurred me to be like, yes, Ambassador, my name. Not so synthetic, or so synthetic, not so spiritual. Uh, shaman, at your, uh, uh, at your every will and fantasy. I t- t- I'm glad I didn't say that because I would have fucked it up. I just said my name and I was like, hey, what's up? Um, and uh, uh, I, re- I remember I went through their space, through that boundary, that white light just, it was like the white light was like purifying me or something. And then I felt this like weight, not um a physical weight but like i almost want to say foreboding um i mean not foreboding but uh just like uh you know a, a something is near feeling something big is coming to town sort of anticipation and uh then it was uh this very very hard to describe feeling um, I would say, uh, it was like, 
at the exact same time, like simultaneously, there was a, all these red and black figures that appeared and just whoosh, And um, they looked like uh, a combination of owls and eagles that were um, kind of arranged in terms of stature, like the tallest one here, next tallest one, next tallest one, and then downwards. And it was like, when they went poof and appeared, I felt this sort of gust of air, but it was warm air, but the, I could also feel there was um, an air of skepticism towards me. And so silly stoned old me just goes, come here, give me a hug, we're all friends here, you know? Um, and uh, I just felt like, oh, I like, this white light was something, but bathing in these feathers, these soft velveteen feathers was beyond fucking beautiful, man. Oh, here's some music for you. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, I, I, I respect people who uh, can do finger picking. It's fucking hard. Um, I've tried, I've tried and I failed. But um, yeah, anyways, so it was like all of these big bird-like beings that, you know, looked like something out of native artwork uh, with these red and black feathers just, just bathing me, showering me in them. And I could feel as that happened those worlds, like, I think they were merging together. And there was a sense of camaraderie that through this person, we can be one again. And oh, like, can I, I can't even begin to describe, like, it, it brings tears to my eyes, like, that uh, this fucking cigar place, they fucking sold me a lighter. It's $20, said it had a lifetime warranty. Fucking stop working after like a week or two but every time I go to bring it back they fuck fucking closed you know, or I just don't have it on me like today <laughs> anyways <laughs> sorry to uh, interrupt this uh, latest with this latest bulletin on the shitty lighter I bought in the middle of describing like one of the most beautiful experiences of my life uh, anyways um so yeah um I could feel this merging between them, and it was like, um, I think, I think like, like, like a cheering, like a thank you, 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 and kind of that whooshing feeling, also feeling of these velveteen feathers just going, like, like rustling, almost like, like someone taking a branch with a bunch of leaves on it and shaking it, you know, it was, very profound feeling of um, taking like uh, like too polarized but insanely complex uh, detailed seemingly aware groups and uniting them as one using yourself as a vessel like it and, you know, I'm still, I'm still, you know, someone who sees these, like, profound mystical experiences as nothing more than um, a psychological manifestation. I always have to say that as a disclaimer, but it was, like, like messianic in a way, like, I don't know if I'm even pronouncing that word right, I apologize if I'm not, but, um, like, like, it was, like, being the battery between... Um, bringing together two generators that just generated warmth and love and just profound honor and like it, it seriously makes me uh, makes me want to ball my eyes out a bit. But um, I was like by the end of it, just taking my vial of DMT and fucking kissing it and like holding it to my heart and being like, "See this heart? This heart beats for you." And like. And I was like, I'll be your ambassador any fucking day of the fucking week. Um, but, yeah, no, good times. That was fucking awesome. Um, anyways, I'm going to be going somewhere where it's probably noisy, so I'm going to shut up now. But 
yeah, no, I, I hope you can um, just try to picture yourself in that situation and the beauty of it and the splendor, the sense of profound union. I mean, I'm recycling a lot of the same words right now, but it's just those are the ones that hit the mark the most. And anyways, with that, I'll say hey, fucking subscribe and thank you. And here's a gold man for your entertainment. Gold man. Gold man. Bye-bye.